Don't come in here. God help you if you should go in this room. This time on Unexplained Mysteries, America's Most Haunted. It's like a scream. Please, somebody notice that I'm here. And I actually thought, I was like, ha ha, I'm all alone, maybe I'll see a ghost. Unsolved murders, unsolved questions, unpunished perpetrators of horrible deeds. We'll explore the unexplained phenomenon of hauntings. Eyewitnesses have experienced them all across America. From California, to Colorado, to Florida. With our case studies, you'll hear the true stories of people whose lives have been altered forever. The feelings I've been having must be very similar to the feelings that someone has just before they're going to die. The expert who explores every scientific possibility. These are chemicals which can create a hallucinogenic effect on the people. And the psychic who uncovered a mystery. He said, I didn't kill him. I didn't kill him and he's angry. Don't be angry at me. You'll visit the rustic lodge with a history of murder. Something is there and you can feel it. You're repelled by it. The Indian reservation with a bloody past. There's like a school of the children of the dead. The Chicago nightclub and its connection to two tragic disasters. I smelled the most horrible stench of death. I truly believe there is something going on here. What it is, I don't know. And the country music bar known as Hell's Gate. And her head was given as a blood sacrifice to the devil. There's a, a psychic image of a lot of blood in this room. A lot of blood. When I look back up, the voice was screaming, get out, get out. And we'll give you our final analysis in our Unex report as we uncover the truth about ghosts on Unexplained Mysteries, America's Most Haunted. Every town has one, whether it's a dilapidated mansion, an abandoned factory, or even a secluded mountain hideaway, there's some place no one goes at night. They are places of death, of tragedy, and of sorrow. They are America's Most Haunted. It is a picture postcard retreat that has hosted some of the most famous luminaries of the 20th century. And then there are guests who never left. It's impossible to live there and not feel it. Uh, it's going on all around you. I believe there's something. It attacks people who seem to be the most vulnerable. I do believe in ghosts. I never had before, but I do now. Bill Gilbert owns the Brookdale Lodge. It's located in Northern California. But for those who live here and work here, this is not a restful place. I was cleaning the tables, and when I looked up, I saw this little girl. Um, her, her face, her image was on the other side of the window, and um, couldn't see any of her body except for the top part of her. One of the most unique attractions of the lodge is a brook that runs through the center of the building. But it too has a dark history. In 1955, a terrible flood raced through the lodge. And then the following year, just as they were getting back on their feet, the uh, famous dining room burned down. Jennifer is Bill Gilbert's daughter. She lives at the lodge and has felt the power of the Brook Room. I walked into the Brook Room, that's where the river runs through the restaurant, and the second I walked into the room, a hot sensation came over my lips. Christopher Chacon and his team of paranormal investigators are here to rule out any natural causes. He examines the water running through the building. Maybe it holds some hidden clue. We look for radon in the air, toxic or hazardous chemicals, and these are chemicals which can create a hallucinogenic effect on the people and make them imagine that they're having experiences. Jennifer and her sister Kim are not so quick to dismiss the things that they have experienced. I live right in the lodge and there's, um, uh, there's been do um, the doors broken off of the, the hinges, there's been um, planks torn off the walls. It was from the inside and it was like the tearing off of something um, supernatural. Psychic Sylvia Brown is here to find answers. She's drawn to the famous Brook Room. A crime plays out in front of her. All of a sudden, from the side comes a dark woman with a big braid. 
The child spins around, and the woman seems like she's pushing. Sylvia's revelation casts new light on a known piece of Brookdale history. One of the tragedies of that era was when the niece of the uh, lodge owner drowned in the famous uh, brook. Maybe this drowning wasn't an accident. Could this unpunished crime explain what is happening here? Christopher Chacon believes he has ruled out any natural explanation and feels he is left with only one conclusion. The experiences people are having here are very real and, and that they are perhaps in some way uh, a ghost or a residue haunting taking place. The area itself and especially the lodge is a very beautiful place, um, but there is an evil presence there. Georgetown, Colorado, outside Denver along the Westwood Trail. Settlers came here to mine silver and stake out a future for themselves. 100 years later and the town looks the same. The silver is gone, but the buildings remain. Along with what people believe are the spirits of the pioneers who died here. Bill Pentland and Becky Richardson moved here to escape city life. They fell in love with Georgetown's easygoing atmosphere and gentle pace. They bought an historic building and opened up the Full Circle Cafe. Right away, the couple noticed that something was wrong. Little subtle things started happening, just noises and, and uh, oh, just <laughs> some things rattling and things like that. We turned the TV off, it's on, but we turned the lights off, they're on. Anything that had to do with water was breaking down. Ice machines, sinks, toilets, pipes under the ground. I mean, it happened night after night after night after night. These little annoyances were frustrating, but they quickly became a part of the routine. It was all just a part of the Georgetown experience. Then the incidents became more violent. I was by myself and something came up from behind me and grabbed that, the bar stool and like turned me around just like you would just like turn around real fast, you know, or something in your chair. Someone or something was still here and Bill and Becky wanted to know what it was. They contacted psychic Peter James, hoping he could provide some answers. My preliminary sense of what is within the, the structure, not necessarily here as we speak, is a male entity. And I pick up the name of Edward. And I'm Edward B, is all I get so far. His last name has two syllables, boom, boom. And it sounds like ridge or bridge. In 1867, Edward Bainbridge and John Martin were playing poker at Nichols Saloon, now the Full Circle Cafe. When Bainbridge lost the hand, he drew his revolver and shot Martin in the face. And he said, James was an SOB, and he made me angry. But there's something around his neck. And he also talks about being around some rocks. I don't know what that means, but he's around some rocks. An angry crowd dragged Bainbridge to a place known as the Point of Rocks and hanged him. And he said, I didn't kill him. I didn't kill him and he's angry. Don't be angry at me. When the mob returned to Georgetown, they discovered that Martin didn't die. Bainbridge hadn't killed anyone. What I get is the reason why he's here is because he wants us to know that he was accused of something that either didn't happen or he didn't do it. And until that's made public, he's not going to rest. Next up, more of America's most haunted. The Native American reservation with a history soaked in blood. When I left the land, I was at the point of tears. I can't say what it is, but there's definitely something in the basement. Two disasters tied to a gothic nightclub in downtown Chicago. It's like, ha ha, I'm all alone, maybe I'll see a ghost. I smelled the most horrible stench of just death. I truly believe there is something going on here. What it is, I don't know. 
Lord Alley, America's most haunted highway. I was so scared I just kept trying to get as fast as I could to get out of there. And the country western bar that stands at the gateway to hell. Satanic worshippers went there at night to worship and praise the devil. And when I looked back up, the voice was screaming, get out, get out. A psychic image of a lot of blood in this room. A lot of blood. And we'll give you the ultimate update with our Onyx report. Stay tuned for more on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries, America's Most Haunted. When I looked up, that's when I saw the woman in the road. Union Cemetery, Connecticut. Reports of a white spectral presence are common here. Psychic Lorraine Warren has spent years studying this white lady. She has a theory as to why the apparition cannot rest. Black spirits, or inhuman spirits, seem to not allow her to get the help that she needs in order to pass on correctly. So for that reason, she remains earthbound. Lorraine and husband Ed have dedicated themselves to helping others understand their experiences here. If we would be in any pain or any anguish, we would go up to someone we felt a great deal of sensitivity from. The spirit would do exactly the same thing. Light attracts light, and the spirits found compassion in a man like him. I was very sad. I, I started crying in my car. Um, I don't know if part of it was nerves that I, I was frightened or if it was just the, uh, the sadness that came over me was in incredible. The sense of sorrow uh, that he felt is, is the compassion that he felt for that particular spirit. That is called radio telethesis, where you feel the pain or the anguish of the particular spirit. What makes this supposed haunting so remarkable are the photographs. Ed and Lorraine regularly lead tours through Union Cemetery. They guide the spirit photographers to the white lady. See, you're not photographing a ghost. The ghost is implanting its image. There have been people from every walk of life who have gone into those two cemeteries, Union and Stephanie, and come out with fantastic psychic pictures. As long as the white lady wanders this cemetery, Adam and Lorraine will continue to try and give her the peace she seeks. She was human one time. She still has human feelings, but she's very confused. For those who have crossed paths with the White Lady, it is an experience they will never forget. This experience has uh, taken away any doubt in my mind that there is a, a life after death. Our spirit definitely goes somewhere. Outside Carson, Nevada stands the Stewart Indian School. These decaying stone buildings are a link to the past for Native Americans still living here. The school has been closed for more than 70 years now. The students long gone. Or are they? I have seen two children that are playing on the grass. But as I keep walking, I turn to back to look at them. They're no longer there. Native Americans are not afraid of death. And they believe the sight of these spirit children is a blessing. They seem to be playing with each other, rolling around with each other. And when you take a second look, they have gone. But it is believed that there is another spirit here, in the basement of the administration building. He is known as the superintendent. Bo Sargent recalls his first trip down these stairs. I felt scared. My whole body was just nothing but goosebumps, and my hair was standing, and like that odor. Oh, that was the odor that I smelt down there seemed to stay right inside my nose. Other reports paint a picture of a tortured soul. I've heard stories that he stands in front of the fireplace and uh, with a blanket wrapped around him and he shivers, he's cold, trying to get warm. I think that what a lot of these people have seen are the remains of that energy, unresolved conflict, unsolved murders, unsolved questions. 
um, unpunished perpetrators of horrible deeds. Psychic Julian Defray is called in to answer the question, what is happening here? Jorian wanders the old school grounds, attempting to pick up psychic energy. She believes these impressions tell a tragic story. I don't know if there's been slaughter on this property. I don't know what's going on here, but the loss is overwhelming. I believe that the government has had stuff to do here or something. I don't know if this land has changed hands or whatever, but uh, what was once uh, yours will be yours again like that. Okay, mm -hmm. does that make sense to you? Completely. A lot of people died here, just unbelievable. A lot of people also, somewhere, were cut down in their prime. Yes, these here. are the children you're talking about. I really feel bad for you guys, because there's so much injustice here. From 1890 to 1930, Native American children are forcibly taken away from their families. They are sent to the Stewart School to learn the ways of the white man. It was a, a roundup, a wholesale roundup, much like you'd gather unbranded cattle. And some of the children were actually even brought here in cattle cars. So the, the process was a mandatory roundup. This was a place designed to break the spirit of these children. Tradition and culture were destroyed, atrocities committed. Now, many believe the children are speaking out. Oh, I'm going to tell you right away, the sense that I get in here is like this, uh, you know, don't come in here. All right, don't come into this room, okay? God help you if you should go in this room, okay? Like uh, something or somebody is going to get you. Jory Am feels the evil energy within this room is overwhelming. Why aren't they here? You know, who's not here to, like, save us? You know, and then having to run. And no one is here. Somebody on the other side holds the children's hands, okay? There's like a school of the children of the dead. Jorian's revelation has opened up old wounds and brought new hope. She leaves believing that as long as the spirit children dwell here, they will be protected. We honor the spirits of the children who are here. We love them. Pacheco Pass Highway. It has been described as the most deadly 42 miles of road in America and known as Blood Alley. Those who drive here say Pacheco Pass is haunted. I began to feel that I was being invaded. I saw a little girl with her hands pressed up to her eyes, screaming, help me, help me. I saw men hanging up on a hill, like somebody put them up on a gallows. It was like a montage of horror. Seventeen ninety seven. The Native Americans of Pacheco Pass are taken prisoner by the Spanish. They are rounded up and forced to work at San Juan Baptista Mission. After staging a bloody rebellion, the Native Americans escape, but are soon wiped out by Spanish soldiers. 1860 to 1880, famed bandits Joaquin Marietta and Tiburcio Vasquez use the pass as a hideout and hunting ground. They rob, rape, pillage and kill. Settlers are routinely attacked here. This trail to the west is soaked in blood. Today, drivers still feel the vibrations of that violence and bloodshed. Jaco Pass seems to have some kind of, if you will, a tornado of emotion. And it's like traumatic events all concentrated into a ball or a whirling mass or a a vortex of some kind. It's almost like there was layers of time upon time. There was fighting, there was Indians, there was covered dragons. Everything that I experienced was like bloodshed, futility, despair. Police dispel the idea that Route 52 is haunted, but then there are those who have experienced the terror of driving through this pass. 
It was like all of a sudden, time became like a glass cage of horror. It was like I couldn't push out of it. Everybody was being like possessed by something that was driving them to, uh, to destruction. I was so scared, I just, I, I just kept trying to get as fast as I could to get out of there. People feel echoes of the past reverberate here. Bloody history replayed in the minds of drivers braving the road known as Blood Alley. I don't know that I can put my finger on it because I've never delved into the psychic all that much and, and, and hadn't thought that much about uh, ghosts and things like that. But I did have the feeling that death was around the next corner. This is the spirit of Oregon. Passengers who ride the refurbished locomotive get a trip back in time to the age of gold rushes and robber barons. And it is believed a few spirits from the past are still along for the ride. The spirit of Oregon is very much alive. But it wasn't until the maiden voyage that signs began to appear. We were showing the before pictures that we took of the train and one of the gentlemen said, hey, you've got a ghost in your picture and we kind of scuffed at it because all you could see was a blue haze. As the locomotive's popularity grew, strange things started to happen. There was a bartender on the train that would have glasses blow up in his hand, or, you know, dishes will fly off, or chairs will get jerked out from underneath you. We had a lot of really strange things happen. Beating on the walls on our offices when there's nobody out here. And we'll see people walking through the trains when we know the train's locked up and it has a security system on it. Passengers were even being affected. Michael Palmer and his wife booked a trip to celebrate her birthday. It was August the 6th. Suddenly, Michael feels what he suspects is a current of psychic energy pass through him. It was, it was like a despair, an emptiness. Suddenly a realization came to me that the feelings I'd been having must be very similar to the feelings that someone has just before they're gonna die. Something was wrong on the spirit of Oregon. And the only clue was the blue figure that had materialized in the middle of the photograph. A photo that appeared to be still developing a year after it was taken. We could see it was changing. We couldn't understand it at first, and then as it kept getting clearer and clearer, we happened to mention it to a gentleman by the name of Edmund Stone. Edmund Stone, a local television producer, decided to do a story on the refurbished train. With Wade Evans behind the camera, Stone starts interviewing passengers, but within moments, Wade has to stop. Yeah, I felt something was inside of me trying to get out, actually. Then I started feeling emotional. Uh, uh, tears were rolling down my eyes. Uh, I felt very sad. In fact, I actually threw up. And had to, uh, and got weak, uh, couldn't stand for a moment. These were the same feelings Michael Palmer experienced on the same train, on the same day, one year later, on August the 6th. I started to wonder, I know it sounds strange, if perhaps there was a reason it was happening at that time. Stone was determined to find out why. And the more I, I looked into it, the more I, I thought, them, if, if there's a reason that things are happening, maybe it's connected with a train crash. Southern Pacific 687 is on a routine run. It approaches a trestle under construction. Mary Jane Walker's father was on that train. Unbeknownst to them that all the support had been taken away from the trestle. The train is waved on by workers. Halfway across, the bridge begins to sway. And they didn't even get all the way over and it went down like a deck of cards. The terrible crash claimed the lives of five men, including Mary Jane's father. And we start to look, we realize, hey, maybe this wasn't such an accident after all. Then what if they were trying to tell us, hey, look at this, because we shouldn't have died. As more information about the wreck is revealed, the images in the photograph seem to become more vivid. We 
look and see where they had the old-fashioned blue uh, railroad shirt and the old-fashioned vest, and then you could actually start seeing a lantern hanging down. I'm a believer. I think that it had to come. Somehow, they had to get it out, the men. Their spirit would not rest until the truth was known about that damn wreck. Coming up on Unexplained Mysteries, the witnesses. It's just this really small voice just crying. I smelled the most horrible stench of just death. The evidence. There are two clear presences on that photograph. I thought it was fantastic that we had actually picked up energy on the photograph. The experts. It was a tremendous burst of energy. This is something that, that I don't think can be explained away in, in terms of simpler theories. The psychics. There's a lot of blood in this room. A lot of blood. The most haunted. Their blood was poured into a well. The well is known as Hell's Gate. And you'll get the ultimate account with our Onex report coming up on Unexplained Mysteries. Explain Mysteries, America's Most Haunted. The Excalibur, Chicago, Illinois. This nightclub attracts a daring and unusual crowd. It's a very underground club. Um, a lot of the people that, that hang out in the club, they're into the occult. The darker aspects of the, the club scene definitely hang out here. And, uh, I'm sure a lot of that is due to the energy that's that's in this room. Some believe that this energy is the evidence of a haunting, a haunting that has been experienced by everyone who works here. What we do before the club opens at night is just kind of run upstairs and check the do a bathroom check. And um, I ran up there and I ran in there and I actually thought I was like, ha ha, I'm all alone. Maybe I'll see a ghost. And went to wash my hands and I had heard. Crying, and at first I was like, "What is that?" And and I stopped for a moment, and I was just this really small voice, just crying. I saw something right behind this bar. Uh, I walked in to shut the lights off, and next thing I see is a a white uh, tuxedo feature uh, with reddish hair glowing beyond the bar. I looked one more time to make sure, and it was gone. It was just there was nothing there. I had one experience. I smelled the most horrible stench of just death, rotting flesh that I've ever experienced in my life. It was almost made me pass out. It was so, so intense. I, I truly believe there's something going on here. What it is, I don't know. At the Excalibur, the key to the mystery can be found in the building's tragic past. Eighteen seventy-one, the Great Chicago Fire. Half of the city burns to the ground. Among the buildings destroyed was the Chicago Historical Society, which stood on the site of the Excalibur. Forty-four years later, a pleasure outing on the Chicago River turns deadly. The Eastland, which was a excursion boat, capsized in the Chicago River, and uh, the 2,500 people on board, about between 8 and 900 people, died. There's also been some speculation that after the Eastland disaster in 1915, that, that this building we're in now was, was one of the temporary morgues that had been set up for the victims. Could the strange activity at the Excalibur be linked to these two disasters? The club owners called psychic Jorian Defray and paranormal researcher Peter Moscow to investigate. Immediately, Jorian starts picking up telepathic impressions. In this area, my chest is actually feeling um, pretty heavy, and um, I had heard a sense of watching out for the bodies before. Would this at, at one time have been a, a place where there would have been bodies or something? Well, when they had the, um, the, the big naval disaster in the Chicago River, the, the Eastman? Yeah. The uh, cruise ship capsized, and there were hundreds of people that died. Uh, this room was used as a, a temporary morgue. Oh, this room was? Oh, yeah. great, okay. I'm getting a sense that somebody's behind me at bar. And I'm almost like, I don't know, doing some kind of serving or something else to somebody else that's out here. 
And it kind of feels like they are not alive. One of the managers had an experience where he saw a bartender in a white tuxedo Good deal. with um, reddish colored hair. You got it, Peter? Got it something flashed else? just as I turned around here, right into this oh, area. Oh, good deal. As I turned around, it went it went from about a four and a half to five all the way up to a 15 on the dial there. So right in this area here, I believe you're going to find uh, who you're looking for. Yeah. It was a tremendous burst of energy. A few moments later, Peter's camera goes off by itself. The resulting photograph is startling. Clearly, there are some abnormally strange streaks of light in this, which I cannot account for. I think it's the barman that triggered this abnormal yeah. photography. I, I thought it was fantastic that the camera had gone off by itself and that we had actually picked up energy on the photograph. Jorian and Peter confirm what the employees of the Excalibur have sensed. They believe the spirits here are not evil. They are the lost souls born of the city's darkest moments. All they want is to be remembered. Unexplained Mysteries, America's Most Haunted. Welcome to Bobby Mackey's Music World in Wilder, Kentucky. What patrons of this bar don't know is that it used to be a slaughterhouse. The blood-soaked floors tell a gruesome story to anyone who ventures inside this evil site. Satanic worshippers went there at night to worship and praise the devil due to the blood that was spilled there from the dead animals. Their blood was poured into a well. The well is known as Hell's Gate. When the slaughterhouse closed, the well was sealed up. But this building's bloody history was just beginning. In 1896, a girl named Pearl Bryant was beheaded somewhere in that area. Two men, Alonzo Walling and Scott Jackson, were arrested for that crime. The killers were sentenced to death, but they never told police where the head was, even after the judge offered to spare their lives. The rumors that have abounded here for years is simply that these two men were satanic worshippers and her head was given as a sacrifice, a blood sacrifice to the devil. And they would rather die than suffer Satan's wrath. Pearl was five months pregnant when she was murdered. The father, one of her killers. Pearl's head was never found, but it is believed her spirit still haunts this country western bar. Many, many people have sworn they've seen the form of a headless girl floating through the nightclub, moving through the crowd when the band's up on the stage play. Yeah, I won't come in here unless I have to by myself because uh, this is a, a, a very dark, eerie, weird feeling building. Echo Bodine is a psychic. She attempts to channel the energy and forms a picture in her mind. But when she enters the basement of Music World, Echo is unprepared for what happens next. There's a, a psychic image of a lot of blood in this room. A lot of blood. A lot of hatred. There's definitely an energy here that does not want me to do any of this. All right? I mean, it's really strong. Echo's visions convince the researchers that there is possibly more than one uneasy spirit here. There's been definitely violent death in this place and uh, sad death. I kept hearing voices crying about the broken dreams of this place. The broken dreams that trace back to a tragic love story from the 1930s. There was a dance hall girl there named Johanna. She became pregnant by a man named Robert Randall, who was a singer at the club. Her father supposedly had Robert Randall killed. This was according to a diary that was found inside the nightclub. She consequently poisoned her father and herself and committed suicide inside the same nightclub. Johanna, according to the diary, was five months pregnant. At the time of her death, Pearl Bryan was also five months pregnant, and Bobby Mackey had his own connection to the building's dark history. At one day old, his umbilical cord, where the doctor had severed it, had ruptured and he almost died. For some unknown reason, his mother changed his name to Robert Randall Mackey. 
Robert Randall, the same name as the singer. I didn't want to hear it. And I told him, in fact, you know, to keep quiet about it. I didn't, didn't want to get in the round because I had everything I owned stuck in here. And, uh, and I had to make a, a success of this some way or another. Then, Mackie's wife, Janet, had her own encounter, supposedly attacked by an unseen force. She, too, was five months pregnant. Something had grabbed me around the waist. It seemed like it was trying to attack my child. Okay. And it picked me up and, like, threw me back down. Then when that happened, something grabbed my head and was kind of forcing me down. I got away from him, and when I got to the top of the stairs, there was pressure behind me, pushing me down the steps. And when I looked back up, the voice was screaming, Get out! Get out! The attack sent Janet into early labor. The child was saved, but the experience has scarred her for life. From its days as a slaughterhouse, to the satanic rituals, and the murder-suicide of two young lovers, to the attack on a pregnant woman, Music World's terrible history continues. Next, the UNEX report. We'll examine the evidence and answer the questions, what causes a haunting? Is it a residual energy absorbed into the environment? Or do the spirits of the undead walk among us? Or could it be something else that we don't understand? What does the White Lady have in common with the demons of Hell's Gate? Next, with our Unex Report, when Unexplained Mysteries returns. Unexplained Mysteries, America's Most Haunted. And now for the Unex Report. According to some, a tragic event from the past can sometimes manifest itself in a particular place. And when it bleeds through into our world, we call it a haunting. Scientists researching these haunted sites have confirmed that something is happening. This is something that, that I don't think can be explained away in, in terms of magnetic fields or radiation. I think that it's something of a genuine parapsychological nature. But no one seems to agree what exactly is causing these hauntings. They could in fact be nothing more than impressions that have been left behind in the environment that certain people are, are perceiving and sensing under certain extraordinary circumstances. Eyewitnesses have nothing more to go on than the uneasy feeling they experience inside one of these supposed haunted sites. The second I walked into the room, a hot sensation came over my lips. You get a really weird feeling as you're going down the stairs. Almost like she was reaching out, not to get me, but reaching out for something. Can a psychic vision offer any answers? There's like a school of the children, of the dead. And they sit all by the water, waiting for you to come talk to them. There's definitely an energy here that does not want me to do any of this, all right? I mean, it's really strong. He said, I didn't kill him. I didn't kill him, and he's angry. Don't be angry at me. Even when I left the land, I was at the point of tears. Sometimes the haunting can be traced to an actual event, a train crash. Their spirit would not rest until the truth was known about that damn wreck. A satanic murder. There's been definitely violent death in this place. A forgotten atrocity. Unresolved conflict. Unsolved murders, unsolved questions, um, unpunished perpetrators of horrible deeds. A historical disaster. Would this at, at one time have been a uh, place where there would have been bodies? And there are those who believe that hauntings are caused by lost spirits unable to pass on to the other side. But she's very confused. She doesn't realize what's happened to her and she's trying to find out. This experience has uh, taken away any doubt in my mind that there is a, a, a life after death. The only thing we know for sure is that people who experience them will always believe. But for us, it remains an unexplained mystery. Next
explain mysteries, uncover stories and footage of when ghosts attack tomorrow night from 10. Coming up after the break, we get down and dirty with the ladies who are always having the willies put up them. See you for Laid Bear next.